Hi crafting friends. You're very welcome here. This is Susan from Wild Cottage in Ireland, except I'm not in Ireland. I will be returning tomorrow, which is Saturday the 13th of November. So I'm very excited about that. I'll give you a little bit about that in just a small life section at the end if you're interested. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick check-in to show you some of the things that I've been knitting on, a couple things I've finished as I've been here in Williamsburg, Virginia in the USA. Okay, so let's just get started. I want to keep this quick. So one, my main finished object, now I, as I've been here, I've been here uh, sort to be with family members, help them through a health crisis. And so I haven't had a lot of time for knitting or watching podcasts or anything, but I did get a couple things done. And one of these is a shawl that I've made for my middle sister for her birthday. So I've just stuck it on so you can see it. And it is by, um, it's based on a pattern uh, by Finicky Creations called the Easy Goes It Shawl. It's a free pattern. It's on Ravelry, if you can use Ravelry. And it's the DK version. And I probably haven't followed it slavishly. I just kind of do my own thing with it now. But it's it's a real easy pattern. And you have a little, you know, sort of some yarn overs, knit two together to uh, create a little bit of interest. Now, the yarn is... Um, and I've forgotten to bring the tag because I have a lot of things packed. But I will write it down in the description box what it is. It's, um, But it's a blend of wool and cotton and some acrylic. Uh, and it's one that I got in an estate sale. I got a few balls of that. And um, so I just whipped this together. And the reason I chose this yarn is because my I middle think. sister has two daughters. Uh, and I've made them also knitted items out of similar colors and so this is why I chose these colors because they kind of will coordinate if not match and I thought that was kind of a nice thing. I mean her daughters are one is a teen and one is a woman but I just thought I don't know I thought that was nice. So this is the finicky creation easy goes it shawl sort of <laughs> and it's a really enjoyable knit. So yeah, so I finished that. I'll just throw it back on here so I don't flash any boobage because this tank top is a bit, it's a bit loose. Okay, so I'll put that back on. And I have finished another gift knit. And again, this is, if you saw my one video about the yarn finds, the amazing yarn haul I got at Goodwill in Williamsburg, kind of near when I first arrived here about two months ago, um, I got some more yarn there. And just recently, they had literally like two or three ten. days ago, 10 of the big, 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 you know, plastic tubs full of yarn come in. And don't you know, I went through all of them and I bought some things, but they're all packed away. And I will show you them when I get to, to Ireland. But one of the yarns was a Patton's Croy. No, a, it's probably quite old. It's not a Croy. It's, it was just a Patton's wool yarn. And I've made some bed socks. So they're kind of like snip slippers, but not quite. I made a pair of bed socks for my father. Because his feet get very cold, you know, because when you have heart disease and diabetes, often you don't have the great circulation. And his feet get really cold. But it's important that he doesn't have anything tight around his ankles. So I've knitted these. So this is a DK. And what I did is I used um, 3.5 five millimeter needles and I knit on the small circulars and I put on uh, 60, I cast on 64 stitches. And so they fit him, I measured his foot. They fit him, but loosely, but not too loose, like they're gonna fall off when you're turning around in bed. And the most important point was that the ankle not be tight. And I have done the shadow wrap heel that Denise of Earth Tones Girl has made really popular with her video show on how to do that. And I am a convert. I am absolutely a convert. Now different heels probably suit different people and they fit different types of feet. For my foot, it fits really well. And I was doing heel flap and gusset, but I found it fiddly and awkward, especially picking up the stitches. I was doing the magic heel sock some, which I modified the length of the heel part to fit my foot better, but I was never as in love with the fit as was like I like the fit of the heel flap and gusset but it was I just didn't knit socks for ages because 
I found that too fussy and I found the magic heel fine but I didn't quite like the way it fit around my ankle um and that's just so I kind of put aside sock knitting and I tried the shadow wrap heel and it's super easy to do I have now got it memorized and so I would say if you haven't tried it yet do try it you mightn't love it as much as I do and some of the other people do but um, you may be like, oh my goodness, it's a revelation. So yeah, so thank you so much, Denise, for making that super accessible. And she has a pattern on Ravelry for just the vanilla sock with it that you can buy for, I think it's a couple dollars. Or you can just follow along on her free video here on YouTube at Earth Tones Girl. So anyway, so I made these for my dad. Um, they're still a bit damp, so they're drying. And I'm really excited to be able to give those to him. That was that was his birthday present. And I also, now we'll just go into a few quick works in progress. Um, I have also have uh, done, nearly done, um, just a vanilla sock for me with the shadow wrap heel. And this is what I started off with to try the shadow wrap heel. And I've got the first sock done. And I didn't do a contrasting heel because I was just learning the heel and I hadn't really thought about, you know, putting that in a contrasting color. And I'm on the foot of the second sock now. And the yarn I'm using, I oh, I don't have the tag in here and I'm sorry about that, but it's a Giddy Aunt Yarns. It's the, it was their Christmas cast on yarn from last year and it's called Smiling's My Favorite, which is an elf reference and I love elf. And so you had the 100 gram uh, main and then the little uh, mini that has the sparkles for your heels and toes and cuffs if you want. So yeah, that's knitting up really nice. It's got a bit of sparkle uh, and I'm super excited and it fits my foot really, really well, that shadow wrap heel. So that's me going forward. So I'm nearly done with that. Um, I kind of wonder in chance in bringing that on the plane. I've knitted 64 stitches on my 2.25 Chogu circular needles, which are metal. Um, I'm just wondering because I'm seeing some of the sites are saying, you know, if like you can bring scissors if they're less than six centimeters and this is a two inch needle. So it is less than six centimeters. I haven't quite decided if I want to chance it. I know that uh, a lot of the sites say it's fine. TSA says knitting needles are fine. Um, so we'll see. But another thing I was working on is that I had subscribed to the Nick Picks newsletter and they sent out around uh, Halloween time a free pattern for a pumpkin dishcloth. And I started knitting on that, but then I didn't finish, but this is it starting. And I've taken my needle out because I need to bring my needle home. Um, but it's going to be really cute. And you just, you know, finish the curve and then you put a little green stem on it. And I was just using some big twist yarn that I got probably at Joanne while I was here. And the other big thing I've been working on on and off was the shawlography MCAL from Stephen West. So if you don't want to see that, um, just skip ahead here and I'll try to put a timestamp in. Now the yarns I were, was using, I don't have them all out right now, but it was the Life in the Long Grass and she's an Irish dyer and I wanted to try out her stuff. It was the kit that was uh, made available at Stephen and Penelope for, for the M, especially for the M cow and the kit was called the Autumn Rose Kit. So here is, I've done clue one, I've done it backwards. So that was the start. And I'm sure you, if you watch podcasts, you've seen this all a hundred million times. So I'm not going to tell you all about it. And I finished clue one. And this is where I'm getting ready to start. Oh, I've started clue three, where you're starting to do the little welts. And I'm excited about that. But, and this is where I would like some advice from you. So I've seen the finished shawls now. And for me... For me, and I've thought about this a lot, I really like it up until where you start to do the long wedges and then that kind of semicircular shape, which you can't see real well because I, I have it on, you know, a small enough cable at the minute and, and cable and stoppers. So while it's still really circular like this, I, 
I really like the pattern, the way that it looks, and I like the shape. But then you start putting those long wedges on, and I think that's in start of clue three, because I'm in clue two now. And from there on, I don't like it as much. And I definitely don't like, for me, um, the stripy bits at the edge. So I know I can stop before then, but I'm thinking about stopping before that long wedge part and maybe trying to continue with some of these like I love this what you know could I adapt that to just make the shawl bigger maybe with this part repeated more and more you know and grow it that way in the semicircular shape but I never knit a semicircular shawl before. I've never really knit a complicated pattern like this before. And so I'm a little bit, I feel a little bit unprepared for that. So I'm just wondering what you more experienced knitters, what do you think? Do you have um, any suggestions or tips? Um, yeah, I would really love to hear what you think or if you have any tips about how I could go about that or does it sound like oh that wouldn't really work or will it be easy enough for just to add on you know some some more repeats of those things to to grow the shawl so yeah please in comments below i'd love to hear what you think and then my main knitting that i'm going to do for the plane is i've just cast on the venation venation shawl by amber o'brien and i'm using um, the Robin Promise Fall Maple Leaves mini skein set that I bought during the James River yarn crawl. And so this dyer is um, based in the Flying Needles yarn shop in Williamsburg, Virginia. And, and so she's a local dyer here. And I got her Fallen Leaves 10 skein mini kit. And the Ambo Rhina pattern, the Venation pattern, is based on, Venation is um, the word for like the pattering in leaves. So I thought that fit really well. And she based her shawl that she's made on a 10 skein mini set. So this is, should work out perfectly. In the pattern, it's paid for on Ravel, Ravelry. I think it might have been six dollars. And I've got that else. on my uh, Knit Picks. Knit Picks? Knit Picks. Uh, symphony needles for the plane because they're wooden so I figure that's pretty good but I'd like to bring a sock along as well on those metal needles so what do you think about that we'll see we'll see if I chance it or not so those are the things I'm working on um, I have been packing and unpacking trying to fit all the yarns that I got from Goodwill and other places into my checked in luggage Oh my goodness. So these are two big bunches of yarn and I've had to leave some here. I forgot to talk about the two balls of beautiful uh, fiber that's sitting behind me on the bench. Useful E-W-E, you know, full. I'd put it on the screen if I can. A fiber mill up in Oregon and she has a podcast. I've been watching that and I was so excited to be in the U.S. so I could try some of her fibers and I've ordered a few and I also joined her fiber club and she does a wonderful thing in the fiber club where you can also do a fiber it forward and give a donation for others who might like to, you know, avail of some lovely fiber, but don't have the means right now. So I did that and I just think that's a wonderful sort of service that she offers. So check that out. And I meant to talk about that a bit. I can't fit those in my luggage. I am fitting in the, October Fiber Club and I'll show you that when I get to Ireland and I haven't heard November one is coming but I'm going to be gone when it gets here but I think I'll keep that Fiber Club for a little bit longer so that when I do return it will be here and it'll be super exciting. I also have a very special Christmas mini advent box coming from Robin's Province Yarn which I am she's very kindly uh, setting it up trying to set it up for me early so I can pick it up this afternoon I can bring it home to Ireland with me and I'll show you that I may do a little bit of vlogmas my vlogmases are very craft and nature heavy and Christmas heavy so like there might be cooking and I might show you my ornaments but it's not like um day-to-day -day stuff so it'd probably be something I might do 
you know, once a week or something. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so if so, I will show you that some of that Advent. Um, because Tom was going to come to the States as well for a while. So I thought I would have his checked in luggage to bring some of this yarn back. But anyway, so, but when I get to Ireland and get settled in, I can do a little video and show you some of those other amazing charity shop finds that I found if you're interested in that. So that's basically it. Um, so a little, just a little snippet of life stuff. If you're interested, I've been knitting. It's only for the past week I've been starting to pick up my knitting a little bit more and do the socks and stuff because I wanted to get the gifts done before I left. Um, so I'm excited to get back to watching the podcast again and, you know, leaving comments and, you know, having that kind of relationship again with people online, checking my Instagram again. That's not a thing that I've just really had the headspace to do. So hopefully in the next week or so, I'll be back doing that again and doing some regular podcasts from Ireland. I'm going home early, not because of any like one big reason. It's just been so many smaller reasons that it's just, it got to the point where I like, I was like, I, I have to go back. So yeah, so I'm focusing on the excitement of going back and being with Tom again and being with the dogs again and being out in the garden and in nature. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I have to focus on that part. I have to focus on that part because that's a good part and not, anyway, not focusing on goodbyes. So anyway, I hope you all are well and, um, you know, tough times happen and We'll get through them, you know, keep on keeping on. And uh, and I have been thinking about all my online friends when I've been away and I've been, you know, keeping you when I do my meditations. If I'm saying a prayer, I keep you in there. There's a couple of individuals that specifically, and I won't call out your names, but I have been thinking about you a lot because you've been in contact with me before and I know you're going through some things. And I just want to say I have been thinking with you about you, even though I'm brutal about keeping in touch. So anyhow, yeah, I'm so excited to go back to Ireland. And there are so many winter squashes that we grew and Tom harvested them all. And he sent me a photo of them all in the storeroom. Oh, and I'm so excited to get back and start cooking with them and all the dried beans that we have. And of course, we, we have some winter vegetables growing and uh, also a few things like some uh, late um, broad beans, probably if it's still warm when I get there. I don't know. Anyways, I'm rambling now. So I just want to say take care, friends, and I will see you soon back home in Ireland. Be well, friends.